All right, hey, another video exploring the blues. So I know that I have put out a couple of videos somewhat recently about using the blues scale, how to relate it to the natural minor scale and the pentatonic scale. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore how the pentatonic fits with the blues scale. And today we're gonna focus on the key of F, okay? We're gonna do F because I have a play along that I already posted on my YouTube channel uh, that I'm going to be playing along with so that you can hear me playing along with it to use some of those examples in context. So from there, let's look at the key of F. So uh, a really simple way of doing it if you want to look at a pentatonic scale and you want to, you're just start starting to get used to doing some improvisation type stuff, um, you can use just one scale and focus on that one scale for the entire duration of the blues form. So the blues forms that I have in there, they're usually pretty straightforward. They're either um, one of version one or version two that you can find on my website. It's uh, I might go into a little more complicated stuff, but even when you have those substitutions, it's still gonna work. So uh, from here, what you wanna do is if you're playing in the key of F, a really simple pentatonic, minor pentatonic to use, is the D minor pentatonic. And the reason that that works is because here are the notes. Right, those are the notes. So in the context of F major, so in the context of F major, what you have is the 13th, which is in the scale, it's in the scale of uh, the F major scale, then the first, and we're looking at it from perspective of the one chord. The ninth, the third, the seventh, and thirteenth again, all right? So um, those are all within there. So over the chord of F, they all work really well. Now, you don't necessarily want to finish on D unless you're going to keep going with that because it doesn't feel like it's really centered, but it is within the key. Let's go to the next chord. What's the next chord that you're probably that you're going to encounter in the blues form? Four, which is B flat. Right? Same scale, though. So within the B flat chord, you have the third, right? So it's not the 13th from F, now it's the third of B flat. The fifth. And then the 13th, but we're all within the chord. Now this, it's a little bit more out because it's the major seventh. It makes a major seventh over that B flat chord. But it's not necessarily like really terrible especially if you're you're in within the context of the key of the song anyway so it's passable and then the ninth of the b flat which is awesome that's a great chord that's a great chord tone to have in there Right? And then what's the next chord? Five, which is C7. So again, let's look at the same scale. D is the first note. So you got the ninth, great tone. The eleventh, which is a little harder. It's a little harder to have in there. But because it's within the key, it's not awful. It's just not the preferable one. Again, there's and actually, let me just say there are so many ways to break these rules. These aren't these aren't hard and fast rules. It's just that these are more just like ideas that you want to base off of. Um, but you can experiment. This is the great thing about improvisation is having opportunities to experiment with it. Next note is the G, which is the fifth. Great tone. 
And then the 13th, not a bad tone. And then the root, the root of the C major chord. So I'm going to focus on just that. Let's play the track, and we're just going to focus on that and see how it goes. Just that D minor pentatonic. Swinging. Eh, I don't know. That's fine. It's just to show you, give you guys an idea of what you can do. I mean, but it largely sounded fine. It sounded pretty good in there, right? Another thing, though, uh, that I want you to keep in mind is I was purposely playing really notey. I was moving around a lot as opposed to doing like little motif things where you focus on a specific motif and have a uh, a sort of like this thing where you just kind of repeat it a little bit. We'll explore that a little bit a little later on. But what I want to do right now is kind of expand on that. My bad. Hold on. What I want to do is expand on that, and we're going to make that D minor pentatonic into a D blues scale. And how do you do that? You add that blue note. Right? That's the blue note right there. Okay, so let's look at it from the context of those three chords. I already went all the, over those all those other ones, so I'm not going to necessarily do all those again. However, let's look at it f just from that blue note because we're adding on that blue note, right? So from the key of F... So that is really a flat third or a sharp ninth, depending on how you want to look at it, which is a very cool blue note in the key of, in, in the case of F major. So in that case, it, you know, if you take out the, the A, you can mess around with it without the A or move it, use it as a chromatic movement. Right? Four, B flat. What's the note? It's the seventh. It's the dominant seventh, which is right in the dominant chord. It's awesome. It's perfect. It's gonna fit perfect in there. And then on the C on the C7, which is the five of this key. It's a little more crunchy, a little bit more crunchy. It's a flat 13, a little more crunchy, but it's a cool little uh, addition to have in there so that you can experiment with that a little bit in your little toolbox there um, as you're doing it. So let's check it out with the track. Again, just the blue scale. Oh, 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 
so yeah, that's. I was I was kind of laying it on thick a little bit with that blue note. All right, I was doing that on purpose just so you could hear how it's a little crunchy and add some color to it, and it's a little bit more tasty, but. Um, it's a really great option for you to use. You know, it's a really nice scale. So this is a great way to experiment with learning how to improvise a little bit and focusing on melody a little bit by not uh, worrying so much about how the chords are changing all the time. And there's a lot of different um, uh, improvisational techniques that you can employ on specific chords as they're changing. But that uh, becomes a little bit harder to follow if you're not totally used to it. So this is a way to really get in there and try to get your feet wet and start to get uh, a little bit of confidence in just being more comfortable with those scales that are going to uh, work really well. And there's other ways that you can find other scales that fit that are a little bit more out. I'll put some suggestions of those uh, later on my website. But for those, uh, for now, I just want you to kind of check those out and uh, see if, what you can do with that stuff. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to improvise a little bit and I'm going to show you some quick little ideas. Uh, rhythm is very important. Repetition is very important. And mo motivic, uh, motif development, when you have a motif, it's a little idea that comes back around and around over and over again. Repetition is something that the listener can hold on to. So these are really simple little ideas for you to consider as you're experimenting with this. So I'm just going <clears> to, <throat> I don't want to get into it too much because it'll just end up making this video already a lot longer than it is, which I think it's starting to get pretty long. But um, there's all these different techniques that you can use when you're improvising to kind of experiment with it. So as I'm going, I'll give you an idea of what I'm doing. Uh, so uh, it kind of highlights what I'm trying to do with my improv. Hear that motif? some rhythmic stuff. Why not? It gives the listener something to latch onto. going to stop it right there. You know, um, I like experimenting with this stuff. I think it's fun. And you heard all these little different things. I was doing a bunch of motivic uh, sort of stuff and coming up with little themes that I would expand upon and, and, and just repeat them a lot. Don't be afraid to do that. Sit on a note for a little while. And actually what I didn't do that I should have done more of is use a little bit more space. You don't have to be playing the entire time. You don't have to be playing a ton of notes all the time. There's so many different possibilities. So just experiment with that. Go through all the other ones. I have, I'm have. i going to be posting other feels, other types of um, feels on the blues uh, form in other keys. So you just got to make sure that you uh, know where you're starting and just experiment with that. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm going to cut it right there. I appreciate you visiting with me today in my blues lab. And uh, if you have any questions, just send me a message and I'll uh, do the best that I can to communicate with you and let you know. All right. See ya.